So I built this little garden obelisk last year in the spring and uh, they were kind of happy with it. Uh, it was quick and easy to do, but I thought I could do better. So I built a few more and I thought on this video I'd show you how I make this one. This one's a little bit taller, a little bit more bracing in between and uh, overall kind of a, a better quality of build. There's the two of them side by side. So in this video we're going to make an obelisk. So in the making of the obelisk, I've had to re I need a whole bunch of pieces uh, this size. This is three quarter by three quarter. This will represent the legs and the major pieces that go horizontally across holding the legs together. And then I've got a bunch of pieces cut three quarter by one half that'll represent kind of little cross pieces that go uh, from those little X's in between the legs. So, you know, I'm not worried that that's crooked because we're going to be cutting it into smaller pieces. So the first thing, operation I'm going to do, apart from the cutting, I, I did all this cutting off camera. I figured you probably didn't need to see me running this through the table saw a bunch of times. Uh, what I'll be doing is over here in my little rudder table, I'm just going to be putting a 1 8 inch round over on each of these pieces just to kind of get rid of that very sharp edge. This is cedar wood. Now it's not cedar that came from the utility poles that I've been cutting up on the sawmill. This actually came from uh, a sawmill up north. These are, uh, thanks to John again, these are off cuts uh, from a sawmill. So kind of the outer wood of cedar that uh, from a milling operation would typically be discarded. So it was debarked and I have a few slabs of that that I'm now cutting up into, into these little strips to use for the obelisk. So I'll set up the uh, uh, camera and we'll do some fast forward. You'll see a little bit of footage of me doing these roundovers. <laughs> pieces uh, with a little round over on every edge. Makes it much nicer to handle and touch. I'm going to be using a jig here that I've created to uh, assemble this obelisk. So I have pieces that sit in here. What I'll be doing is making some cuts so that I get this angle right. I want these uh, to be angled properly so they sit flat. And then we'll cut them off at the top here, exactly at this point. So I can mark, I know the angle. So a few cuts to be made on the table saw for all of the four legs. They'll all be cut the same. And then we'll be cutting uh, some cross pieces that run between the legs here. And I have placed marks uh, where I want uh, these cross members to be. I had initially, when I started building these, I was building them with the legs a little, or the first cross piece a little lower, but I've raised it up to here. So cross piece will go here, 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 and here. So let me get the angle set and then we'll uh, make these cuts on the table saw. So with my piece, set into the jig, I can use my T-bevel, kind of line it up against the bottom member and against that leg. And now we have the right angle to cut this off at. 
So I'm going to go over to the table saw and set my miter to that angle, and then we'll cut uh, cut the angle on these legs. Um, the trick to remember is that at each end of the leg, I have to make sure I get the angle at the cut the angle in the right direction. So I'm going to mark the side where I've cut the angle, just so that I can be sure to cut the angle at the right the right way on the other end. So with the angle set on the T-bevel, I can move the T-bevel up against the blade and move my miter up. And get that miter set to the correct angle on the T-bevel. Turns out that's seven degrees. Now we're ready to make some cuts. So the first cut is simply going to be uh, cutting off the end. Uh, we call that the ground end of the legs. Uh, and then we'll go back to the jig and figure out where the height's going to be and cut them off to the right height. And I'm just marking the side that I'm going to make the cut on, so when I get to the other end, I make the same cut. So having made that cut, you can see that I've got now <clears throat> this angle here matches perfectly to this piece here, which is fundamentally the ground. So next we'll be marking up here at the top end of the jig the height that we want to cut this off at. Having determined that we can mark each piece and cut them all to length. All right, I got four cross pieces cut. So I'm going to take them out, um, go over to the table saw and set up the uh, <clears throat> fence so I can just make successive cuts to cut another three of each of them. Okay, I have my <coughs> fence set up to handle the longest piece that I'm going to be cutting. So I can butt the piece up against the fence like that and then I'm going to bring the piece forward. I know I'm going to be cutting exactly the right length. And it helps to do a little bit of pre-planning on these pieces too, so you can be you know, optimize your wood. So I have marked all my pieces. I'm going to be cutting, I, I've numbered them one, two, three, and four. One being closest to the ground, four being high. So I'm going to cut my longest pieces first. They're the number one pieces. So I'm going to get, I have one already cut. Uh, second one is going to be here. So I'm going to take it off this end. I'm going to take another one off this end. <clears throat> that's three. And I'm going to take the fourth one off this end. That's four. Then I can set the saw up to cut my number two pieces. I have one, uh, an off cut. I have one already in place. Uh, this is an off cut, so I can use this for my second. My third piece is going to come out of here, so that will have been cut off, and at the I have the right angle on it, so I can just cut this guy, one cut. And then I'm going to take my fourth one here, I will have an angle cut here, and I just need to make one cut here, and I get my second. And I'll do that so on through uh, the rest of the pieces. I need to make a number four piece out of a little bit of leftover, so we'll cut that in a bit. Slight revision to the cutting plan. My cast, cast off piece is a number one piece, so I'm going to be using that first. It means I will have a little bit left over. We'll be able to get all our pieces out of here.
So there's our <clears throat> four number one pieces. I'll now go and uh, uh, set the saw up to cut the number two pieces. And there's our four number two pieces. Now we'll set up for number three. And okay, for this one, I'm gonna do a little trick I haven't tried before. I'm gonna put a little piece of tape on the surface of the table saw, just some painter's tape. And I can mark where I want this piece to be lined up to. Because it's it's too short, I can't, I can't move it over to the fence. It actually rests within the miter itself, so it's not gonna be uh, not gonna be long enough. So let me set up some tape and I'll try this technique. Okay. So the theory goes, I can take this piece, line them up there. When I cut them through, it'll be the right length. See if that theory works. On our <clears throat> number three pieces, that technique seems to work okay. So we'll do the same thing for number four. Alrighty, and we have our little number four pieces. So now we can start uh, drilling holes and assembling one side. Okay, I've got the <clears throat> first leg, or pair of legs, set up in the jig, and I'm ready to drill a hole so I can drive the screw in to hold these two pieces together. The trick that I have to be careful of is that not only is there going to be a screw going through this way, but there will be a screw going this way to support the cross piece that comes up here. So I don't want to put this screw right in the middle. I want to actually put it down a little bit and angle it up. And then the screw that comes in here is going to come uh, kind of from the top side and angle down. So the screw, two screws going through this leg are going to be slightly offset. Just so they don't collide with each other. So I'll just go through the rest of the uh, legs here and get them put in place. Now I can flip this over. Go through exactly the same process with these legs, lining them up, lining up the cross pieces now with the uh, with the lines that I've got.
There we are, that's one piece done. So we'll go through the exercise exactly the same way to do the other piece, and then we'll start joining the two halves, two sides together. So I'm getting ready now to put the two halves together, and I've got it set up both halves, you can see, standing up here in the uh, jig, and I've used a clamp with a piece there just to kind of keep uh, the two halves vertical. And I realize, you know, it's been a while since I've made these, uh, and I made a mistake. <clears throat> the angle on the legs is supposed to be a compound cut. So, yes, I made it so that these two pieces would be uh, accurately aligned. But I didn't make it <clears throat> the compound cut so that they're going to be lined up this way. So I'm going to have to come back and, and do some fine adjustment on that. But I'll get to that later and kind of step through that process as I, as I uh, do it. Yeah, just feeling a little silly about that. In the meantime, let me get these mounted. Same process as before. Uh, the only difference being where on uh, these pieces I was coming at from the bottom and up, I'm now going to go from the top down. Okay, so the kind of same wash, rinse, repeat for the rest of the pieces. I'll come back when the uh, gobelisk is assembled. And there is our basic structure assembled. So uh, I'm just going to go have a bite of lunch, and when I come back, I'm going to put in the uh, pieces that will go in here, some cross pieces. So three sets. One there, one there, and one there. So the next bit that I'm going to work on are the cross braces that will go uh, through here, kind of like this. So that requires a, uh, an angle be cut off the end of this piece, like so, and an angle being cut off here, like so. So kind of opposite angles at peculiar degrees. So these angles are a little bit odd. Um, they're very steep. Somewhere in the, I don't know where they are, but bottom line is that's the angle that I want to cut. And that's, obviously I can't use the table saw to bend my blade over that far. And I can't use my miter, miter gauge to get it that far. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut this on the bandsaw. I'll come back when I have this first angle cut and we'll measure it over and get the other angle on the other side. have a nice sharp blade in the bandsaw. Let's go back and try this out for a fit. Okay, that's the fit I'm looking for. Obviously it goes down a little bit. Now I can measure and figure out what the angle is going to be over here. That pencil mark is pretty close. So we'll cut at that pencil mark and see what we get. See that that one, that cut we made, the angle's not quite right and it is a little long. So make an adjustment and come right back. A little bit of an adjustment and that looks pretty good. So that's our fit there. That's our fit there. 
very happy with that. I'm going to check that on a couple other uh, cross, see how it fits going from here to here, and on a couple of the other squares, maybe on the bottom or on the side, because I do need seven more of those. So let's just see how that fits other places. Okay, so I just did a test fit in the other spots, and we're, we're reasonably close. Uh, there'll be a little bit of trimming required in each of those spots, but I'm going to go ahead and make seven more of these, and then we'll uh, figure out where we want to put our cut here so that they overlap, get a lap joint. Okay, there's the first two cross pieces laid in place, and what I have learned here is that I want to cut there, and there. And I'll want to cut here on the underside and on the underside. So just kind of marking what I want to cut out here. I'll do the same on this piece. So we're gonna, these pieces are three quarters of an inch thick, so I'm gonna make a three eighths inch, three -eighths inch depth cut, depth of cut there uh, for those to meet. And I'm gonna be labeling these pieces, it's kind of important to um, um, keep the orientation of everything because you can get thrown out of whack in a real hurry if you're not careful. All right, so let me label these guys and then I'm going to do one cut here, uh, get it fitting so you can see how the whole operation is going to work and then I'll go around and do all of the rest of the pieces. A little tedious this bit, but the effect when it's done is really nice. So I've labeled these guys A1, A2, A3, A4 on and on each of these pieces here. So I know exactly where they're going to fit when I put them back together. Okay, I'll go make the slap joint and come right back. And there's our lap jointed piece in place. Turns out to be... It's not exactly a straight cut, it's offset by two degrees, two and a half degrees. So yeah, a little bit of fiddliness, but uh, ultimately we get a nice fit up here, nice fit down here, nice fit here, and a nice fit here. So I'm quite happy with that. Uh, what I'll be using to tack this in place is just some uh, nails, brad nails, um, on my little nail gun. So these are just tacked in place. There's no uh, permanent fixture to them. So other than that, I mean, the intent of this is, at the most, it's going to hold a vine. So it's not going to be like a ton of weight on it. Okay, um, I'll take you through the process of doing. Uh, cutting this uh, lap joint on the table saw uh, since, and then you'll just understand that I'm doing the same thing on all the other joints. So let me show you how I did that. So I've got the miter set to two and a half degrees so rather than being perfectly square it's tilted this way a little bit and I have the piece that the cross brace that I've got I've marked right there on the edge where I want to cut out. I've set the blade to be three eighths of an inch high. So I'm just going to take out a little bit. And I'm lining up that mark. I'll make a cut, move it over, line up that mark, make a cut, and then take out everything in between. Then I'm going to tip the miter two and a half degrees the other way and do the other piece.
And there's our lap joint. Go put that one in, see how it looks. There's our second piece in, second cross brace. Good snug fit all around. Nice fit here, here. And over here we're looking good. And over here we're looking good. So I'm just gonna repeat that process for the other two on this level, then cut pieces for the other eight here and eight here. So eight here and eight here. So I'll get on with that. I'll come back when, I'm, when I have that done. All right, so we've got our level two, number two uh, cross braces in. These angles have changed where before I was cutting at an angle of two and a half degrees. These guys are now 23 degrees. So quite a substantial increase in the angle there. Of course, a much sharper angle here and here. But these are all little, little adjustments you make along the way. Just thought I'd share that little bit of info. So we've got the second set of uh, cross braces in. I'm just going to tack them in as I did here with my nail gun. We'll do that all the way around. So our obelisk is now complete, with the exception of a little pointy bit at the top. So to make the little pointy bit, I have a little prototype here. Uh, I'm going to make one bigger. Uh, I'm just using this off cut. I mentioned that the cedar that I'm using for this obelisk comes from cutoffs from a sawmill. Here's an example of one of the cutoffs. So I've taken a chunk off this piece here, and I cut out of it this little two inch square, roughly, and I have marked on it the diamond that I want to make on two sides that is kind of like that thing, but bigger. So I'll go over to the bandsaw and we'll cut this out. Almost all the way, but not quite. And again, almost all the way, but not quite. <clears throat> now I flip it over and go all the way on these pieces.
there we have our little diamond. So I'm going to take that over to the uh, disc sander and just kind of give that a little quick sand off. And there we have it. A nice little, uh, nice little diamond to sit on top of that obelisk. Just make a little bit of flat spot. <coughs> we have a little platform rough cut. That'll sit on top of there. So I'm just going to cut this out into a little, a smaller square. And we have a platform on which we can place the obelisk, or place the uh, diamond on top of the obelisk. So the last little trick in mounting our little ornamental top on the obelisk, we'll be mounting it onto this, mounting the obelisk, or mounting the uh, little diamond on the top here like that. And of course mounting this, uh, this piece on top of the obelisk itself. So this is the little off cut that we cut into a nice little square. I used my belt sander, uh, the bench top sander to put a nice little bevel on that. And um, what I'm going to be doing on the drill press is I'm going to drill five holes in this piece. Four holes that will be used to hold this onto each leg at the top of the obelisk and a hole in the middle where I'm going to have a screw come up. Actually, I'm not going to have the screw come up. I'm going to um, drive a screw through there. What <clears throat> what will happen is I'm going to drill a hole through the center of this piece. Yeah, I'll, probably better to show you, but in a nutshell, drill a hole, cut the head off a screw, and then drive that screw in to the little diamond. Then I'm going to flip that over with the with the pointy bit of the screw coming out the bottom, and I can screw that into here. A little backwards, perhaps, but you'll see what I'm doing in a minute. Let me get the drill press set up with the correct bit for this. All right, got my piece uh, marked here. I'm either got a three thirty second bit in the drill press. I'm going to drill the three thirty second holes all around here. Okay, drilled. Uh, now I'm going to take this bit out, put it in my hand drill, and then we'll put this on top of the obelisk and drill into the legs. So now by drilling like so, I should be getting into just the corner of the leg. I'm expecting to be hitting the leg about here, so it's just off to one side. But uh, because the leg is tapered, I'll be drilling down into more of the meat of the leg. So I'm going to drill one hole, and then I'm going to put a screw in there. I'm gonna... So that gave me a hole here. Perfect. Now I can put that in and get it clamped in place. So I'm going to put that screw in. And I'm using a pan head screw on this rather than a flat head screw, simply because this is a very small piece of very light wood. And I don't want the pan head to split the wood, which is quite likely. Ask me how I know that. Yeah, I have found the hole in the leg. Drill the next hole. Okay, there's the uh, top of the obelisk. Now we'll just drill the hole in the bottom of our diamond and get the screw set to go through there. So I've drilled a hole in the base of the little diamond. And I've got a screw of which I've cut off the, I've cut off the head. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to put this into that hole, reverse screw it in, so that I wind up with the diamond with a little screw penetration, and then that will be screwed into the top of the obelisk. So I'm just going to go over to the vise and push that all the way in. I drilled the hole just deep enough <clears throat> so that the uh, screw will seat up against the bottom of the hole 
and it won't be tempted to be driven further in. I'll be back in a sec. And there we have our screw seated in our diamond. And now we can put it up on top of the obelisk. There we are, complete. And go back for a bigger picture. And there is our obelisk, now complete. Little diamond on top. So all of that made from off cuts of a sawmill, wood that would likely have made it into the wood pile uh, for burning. And uh, cedar wood, it's beautiful cedar, mostly clear. Uh, I would call this white cedar because it's the exterior of the cedar, so there's very little color to it, but it will still be good in outdoor weather. So, very happy with that. Anyway, thank you very much for watching this little project. Please like and subscribe, and I'll see you on the next video.